and we are live. Hello, Jean-Francois, how are you? Hi, I am good. good. And thank you for having me today. Well, thank you for taking the time to talk to me. So I'm Natalie Nidham, and as uh, those of you who are watching this know, I'm one of the admins on the Biohacking for Superhuman Performance Group. Um, and my partner in crime, Jeff Robinson, is not here today because he's a little laid up. So uh, it's just you and me, Jean-Francois. So uh, today we are so lucky to have Jean-Francois with us. Uh, Jean-Francois has a master's in pharmacology and a whole list of other kinesiology, even engineering. You've got some engineering in your background. <laughs> yeah, for a short while, I was interested in biomechanic uh, after my right, kinesiology. Right? That's how you built the house. But then I got accepted in pharmacy at the uh, University in Mont Montreal, so I just went for the money so <laughs> no I I, 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 went, I I never expected to be accepted already uh, at the time so it was a big surprise but that's really what I wanted so I went for that yeah. good for you and now you are the principal owner president chief guy at can lab in that's right so uh, today we're going to talk we're so first of all one thing I want everybody to know is we're going to try to keep tonight's episode to a reasonable length for everybody's benefit um, because we're planning to do this on a you know on a semi-regular basis so we'll be talking again so we're going to kind of keep ourselves to a couple of topics tonight and we're going to save some more good stuff for another day so tonight what we're going to talk about really is we're going to start um, with the International Peptide Society Conference that Jean-Francois just came back from a couple of weeks ago um, in St. Petersburg, right? Uh, no, uh, that's right. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, in uh, near Tampa. In Florida. So, um, so I guess, I guess the, to start with, like, it, what are your biggest takeaways? Like, what are the highlights from the conference that you came back with? Well, uh, so much was presented in actually such a, such a short period of time. So I'm still um, going through and back to my notes and the, 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 all, all the, the documents they gave us. There is so much to, to, to go back to, to um, assimilate everything. But the biggest takeaway is you know when you look at anti-aging it seems that what you have to attend basically and we know that it's the senescence of the cells right. uh, so that's one thing but it turns out that in a more broader way and that's one of the main takeout of that conference is that actually senescence of the cells it's not only what you should look at as the source of aging, but as the source of any disease. And uh, because, so let's say you have uh, any lung problem or liver problem or brain problem, it all comes down to the individual cells in that organ that are not functioning well. So, and I, it. Sorry, Jean Francois, can you. For the people who don't know what cell senescence is, can you... It's cell uh, death, basically, which can be accelerated by many factors. Uh, all cells eventually will die. That's a normal thing. Cells, the zombie cells, so they're kind of, they're not doing what they're supposed to do. They're... They're still there, but, and they're still cytokines. Yeah, it's the last phase. It's the die... Just be, because there are many phases yeah. for, uh, to a cell. Uh, I, I, we could, I'll put some uh, slides from the uh, conferences so people can see the cycle of a cell. That's the last part of the cell, uh, uh, cell uh, life when everything is not working well anymore and uh, just before the cell dies. Okay. So basically that's that part that you want to reduce to a minimum or eliminate or push away as far as you can. Right. But basically that's the source of most diseases if it's not viral or uh, bacterial. Uh, so by attending, by understanding that principle of cell senescence, you can 
by the same principles treat most diseases. Uh, and that, you know, I cannot yet give you all the details on that. We may come back to that because again, I, that was kind of new to me, that concept. So I have to go back into it to, uh, to, to be able to master it. But uh, that's, that's my biggest takeaway from uh, that conference. What came after was a bunch of uh, doctors talking about their uh, protocols, basically, to, you know, for this and that and that. Some, uh, most I agree with, some, <laughs> I wonder why they do that. <laughs> <laughs> the, but the, the point is, it seems like they have great results, uh, and there is always room. And and Doctor Seeds actually is a very bright man, and the, out of the many questions he had from doctors uh, who, st who are starting with peptides, is okay, what we give you today is the base. You know, even the protocols to start working with patients, but eventually you'll learn to modulate all that where it becomes, and that's his word, it becomes an art. Like in any profession, you know, experience uh, comes from practice. Yeah. And, and that's how you get better. But, you know, at least he gave a base to start with for those who had no clue what they were doing. So now at least they have something to start. And with time, they say, okay, now they, they start to tweak and get better results if I do this. And depending on the, on the patients, okay. Uh, and with time, become better practitioners. But uh, so it laid down very good basis for people to start. Uh, basically, medical doctors who now use uh, peptides. Right, and doesn't and I mean, at some point, the bio individuality of each person has got to come into. Play. Yeah, one of the thing, one missing link, because after all, they all come out from uh, traditional medicine, and one missing link I saw, and uh, we talked about that before, uh, and actually you pointed it out to me, but you know, in many of those groups we're in, you see people who have amazing results with peptides and other people that have almost no results or it's, it makes you wonder, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and then that, that's what you pointed out. You say, no, but some of those people that have been stuck with their disease or their condition for many, many years, and they have tried many things. And a lot of them already went through some kind of detox of heavy metals or toxins in the body and preparing the ground for the peptides to work. Yeah. So those are, you know, and as you mentioned it, you know, all the credit to you, that that peptide now becomes the last key they needed for the whole thing to yeah. to to. Uh, so, and, and yes, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, a few years ago, I was talking uh, to a very dear friend of mine uh, who died. I didn't expect that one from a heart attack. <laughs> but uh, Charles Polican, and he was a lot, he was saying the best doctors, the best of everything. And uh, in one dinner, we had that conversation where I asked him, I said, how long do you expect to live? And he told me 80 years. And I said, whoa, wait a minute. That, that's the, the average we have now, you know, it doesn't. And I said, why? And he said, because of uh, contaminant, pollution, heavy metals everywhere. And it's hard to, uh, if you don't attend that, nothing will work. And... Uh, we see that today, without going a lot of details, but when I started my uh, consultations back in the 80s, at first it was with athletes taking anabolic steroids. Yeah. And back then, very small dosages were used and you would see amazing results. And not to see the same kind of results, you, they need to take 10, 20 times those dosages from 30 years ago and and 
we came to the conclusion it's not the quality of the products because even if they get pharmaceutical, everything, it's still not going to work the same yeah. because of that new toxicity we find in people that wasn't there. It was a bit there, but not as much as today, yeah. 30 years ago. Yeah. And that makes a huge difference. It blocks the receptors. It, it, it uh, integrates to uh, enzymes to take place of uh, minerals if you're deficient. So it makes the enzyme go slower. Uh, so uh, that's why at this point, uh, anybody want to start uh, any protocol, either it's therapeutic or preventive or anti-aging or anything, uh, I, I would go first through uh, uh, detox protocols and primarily uh, heavy metals yeah. to detox those and some kind of rebalancing of uh, minerals for, yeah. to, for any deficiencies that could be there. Because yeah. if you have mineral deficiency, you just open the door for those heavy metal to replace. Yeah, the, and the, the enzymes don't work. Right. So exactly. I, think, I think we underestimate, we think of minerals as bone, but it's, it's Oh no, 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 no. They're the, they're the keys that turn the lock on the enzymatic reaction. And even many, many, actually many like magnesium turns on many genes. Uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, expression. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so that's an interesting concept, right? I think that it's so many people come to, well, we're always looking for the magic bullet. Everybody's looking for what's That's happening. the thing, but, and that comes back to the groundwork. If you don't have, you know, I always give, tell people, you know, whatever. Yes, we can talk about supplements and peptides and all kinds of chemicals, but if the ground work is not done, proper diet, exercise, that's a potent uh, uh, neuroprotector uh, to train. See, uh, yeah, no peptide will replace that. It's like uh, if you had a smoker taking a bunch of antioxidants, it's like, wait a minute, no, first stop smoking. Yeah. <laughs> then we'll look into your... Uh, you understand the, the concept? So I, I see too many people that they want to skip those parts and find the magic pill, the magic bullet that will, but nothing so far replace the basic. And another part of the basic is try to detox as much as you can from those, uh, first avoid them, you know, by the kind of creams and stuff you use, you know, that's household stuff you use uh, to try to eliminate as much as possible sources of uh, those toxins and uh, but at the same time try to eliminate those you have in yourself already. The body can eliminate them at a certain rate. The problem is there is too much now. That's, uh, that's, a, pro that's a problem in our society. Things are happening too fast. The body eventually would adapt but if that what happened in the last 50 years would happen over a thousand years, then we would be okay. <laughs> but the thing is, it happened too fast. The body didn't have time to adapt to those changes. Well, and I think also genetically, some people are better able to deal with questions than others. I mean, you have, there's so many different variants. Of course, of course. Right? So definitely. So, okay. So number one, we have to prepare the terrain, which I think that anybody who's ever met, uh, whether it's a holistic practitioner like me or a naturopath or someone like you who kind of operates in mm. different years, like we will always talk to people about preparing the, like it's like starting a garden, you know? Yeah. You start a garden in a, on an industrial piece of property. You're going to have to clear it out. So and, okay. and like they say, you know, if a fish is sick, what are you going to look at first? The water. Yeah. Not the fish itself. You're going to look at the surrounding of the fish. Okay. So we should do the same thing. Absolutely. Okay. So from the conference, cell senescence is a huge, huge issue and probably a key, not only just to, to anti-aging, but also to dealing with disease. And the second concept really is 
preparing the terrain, not thinking that you're going to just shoot up a bunch of peptides and they're going to magically clear everything out of your system. Exactly. That. Okay, well, that's, I mean, I think that's really interesting, right? I think that um, right there, we may, um, people can, you know, people can upgrade their results. Uh, of course, they, they have to be a bit patient, obviously, because, you know, it's a step-by-step -step process. Yeah. Uh, it's like people who have uh, SIBO or, uh, you know, those intestinal and any functional doctors, they go first, they, uh, they destroy everything. Uh, you know, sometimes it's good. You, you just kill everything with yeah. uh, very strong antibiotics. Then you repopulate with good uh, probiotics yeah. and, and then you heal and, and you do the healing work. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's the same principle, but you know, that, that takes time. You know, it's, it's not like, okay, I'm taking this and tomorrow I'm going to feel better. Maybe you will, you know, if you're not that toxic or for some reason, you, you detoxify naturally better than others. Yeah. But that's why too, some people, they will do the same thing and won't get those results. Absolutely. Okay. So one of the things, so another thing that we want, I wanted to talk to you about was you had posted a slide as a teaser in one of our groups. <laughs> yeah. It raised a lot of uh, so interest. It was basically, it was an anti-aging stack, but it was really, I think it was addressing cell senescence, right? The one, it, it was the one. To, PJC but it's mostly aimed at, at brain, actually. Okay. But uh, if you look at different compounds and, and uh, okay, there is another thing that we should attend right now. When you look at a stack, mm -hmm. You know, me now, you always have to make a difference. Is it, the, is it a therapeutic approach? Like, is there something you want to heal? Yeah. Or is it a preventive approach? Yeah. So, uh, and I think most people in this group uh, are looking more as a preventive approach. So, and another thing, me, I'm a big believer in cycle of life, seasons, daily cycle, we all, cycles everywhere so and i am a big believer in uh, cycling uh supplements and even food and everything should yeah. be cycled yeah, I'm with you. Uh, uh you know uh people they argue that okay uh if you're come from the north of europe like uh, a lot of people uh, uh you know it was a basically a meat based diet and yes, it was in the winter. Yeah. In the summer, they had some fruits, little fruits and more uh, honey. They, and let me tell you, they would eat that. They would find uh, a beehive and they would get eat all the honey they, they could get. Uh, so it's a cyclical. And actually, that's how they explain uh, diabetes now. Because <laughs> it was a protection factor. You know, you... you um, because when it's cold, you need to be more fat. Yeah. So in 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 uh, in the summer, you you eat more carbohydrates, yeah. and you would become. Uh, so I'm talking for those that have that genetic descent. So they would rapidly become uh, insulin resistant by the end of the summer, which would bring about uh, they would get fat, which they needed to go through the winter. Yeah. But the, their new winter diet would restore the insulin sensitivity. Because they become ketogenic. <laughs> exactly. So by spring, they would be okay. And, you know, but it's a cycle thing. So, uh, of course, you, you, if, that, that's a two side to the same knife. You know, if you, uh, like... I have that descent, you know, from Nordic countries. So I'm very easily I become uh, insulin resistant. So it doesn't mean that, okay, it's summertime, I'm going to go crazy. I still have to be careful. But uh, wintertime, I try to get ketogenic or close to. And summertime, I loosen up a bit. You know, I, I get what's available. And 
much quantity. So there, there is a cycle. So with supplements, all those supplements, when it's a preventive, you know, you, and, and it's better for the budget to don't take everything at once. Do small cycles. So you have one supplement you do for three weeks. Let's say the DXA. Now that's a great, uh, I won't go into details of each, but with the names, you just Google it, go on PubMed. You'll see those are amazing things. Dihexa is more of a brain supplement, right? Yeah. It's, I think it's seven times more potent than the, like, that, that uh, brain repairing uh, factor peptide yeah. uh, and it's oral so that's good but see you're not repairing anything you're just preventing things to happen so you don't need to shoot everything at once so you do three weeks uh, and I like three weeks in general uh, 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 mitochondria cycle life cycle is a bit less than three weeks so you know that so i would do three weeks of one supplement then maybe three weeks if you can have it of uh, the cerebralizing then i would do three weeks of maybe high dosages of uh how do you call it uh, lion's mane extract which is great for the brain and go around like that and maybe after three months then start again maybe take a three weeks off everything then start again and go cycle and uh, generally i would go for a good cycle for the brain and parallelly a good cycle more general anti-aging uh, with uh, some of the supplements will embark both uh, for example, the three weeks you do the, 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 the lion's mane, you could do like other mushrooms, uh, chaga and all those mushrooms, that, you know, for immune system and everything. Yeah. You know, it's three, three weeks. I keep chaga in my coffee every morning. Um, and it uh, improves the taste of the coffee. I love it. Uh, but, you know, basically, uh, because a lot of people, when, and when you start, in that field you say okay now i'm gonna and every time a new compound comes out they just they add it and at the end they're taking like ridiculous amount of pills and i've done that for a while uh for many whiles in my life and at one point i would get sick of it or didn't have enough money to sustain it and, you know at some point it becomes ridiculous and uh, uh, in a preventive side, you don't need to do that. You just, you know, take one or two cycle and then do the next one and come about. Uh, there is a couple of ones you may keep always because they're really cheap and, you know, like uh, creatine, you know, you put a bit in your coffee, dissolve it. That's a good brain uh, uh, protection and uh, even for the muscles, tones up a bit. So, you know, but in general, uh, so it's much better for, it's better for your health because pay attention. In pharmacology, I had a teacher who used to say, if a drug doesn't have a side effect, then it doesn't have an effect. Uh, but he was talking more like pharma kind of drugs. Uh, but you see that with peptides too, you know, if you abuse, uh, I think uh, Taylor made Ryan Smith they made a video recently about that. I think it was a bit alarmist, but sometimes you need to do that to make people realize, hey, th there is that uh, crave right now. Everybody is into peptides and they start shooting left and right. So by cycling like that, not taking all the time, then you mitigate the side effect that you may not even notice at this point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, get the best of it, the minimum side effects. You don't accumulate the, the bad effects if there is. Uh, because with most peptides up to now, that's what I like the most about peptides is that uh, there, there's almost no side effects or very minimal. And many times it's a side effect from the effect. If you take a growth hormone secretagogue, you're gonna secrete growth hormone. So the side effect won't come from the peptide, won't come from the actual growth hormone. You would get those side effects if you'd be on the growth hormone therapy. Yeah. So the peptide itself doesn't bring about bad side effects. No. But 
you know, as our king said, you know, in nature, there is no free lunch. So I, I still have that little doubt, you know, I don't know where, but eh, will I pay for this somewhere else one day? I don't know. Yeah. Well, I Hopefully think, not. I think the idea of cycling anything is smart. And I there you go. I think intuitively, if people listen to their to their own intuition, they, they know, as just like you said with the supplements, you know, I myself go through periods when I take supplements very consistently, and then I will go through two or three weeks. And, and, and that goes for those people that sometimes skip a day for a reason and another. Oh, I didn't take my supplement. Nah, don't go crazy over that. You know, it's <laughs> you're not going to die. Uh, and I, it, and it might actually be good. Yeah. I think you allow the body a break. I mean, the one, you know, there's, yeah, I, absolutely. I mean, even things like berberine or resveratrol, I've heard a lot that you want to take those on for a couple of weeks on, like you want to pulse them. Like you want them. To, exactly. There's, a, there's an effect of the body where it's a hormetic effect and it gives a push and then you take it away. And it's just like mm. this of your diet with the seasons i think all of that makes it makes so much sense and you just you can't live like this all the time so the peptides are is an interesting thing but you know what i wanted to ask you about it that that slide that you put up that had the cjc epimorelin the thymus and alpha one the tb4 motc ketone esters rapamycin nad and then it had the new metformin at the bottom like is this pep, is this stack trying to like for me instead of taking some metformin type drug and a ketone ester wouldn't it be smarter just to eat a low glycemic diet like why do you need yeah to if you go in ketosis and produce your own uh, ketones yeah you don't need to take uh, the ester but many people they may go low carb but not quite be uh, uh, ketogenic. So right. yeah, a bit of ketones is good. So but like you... anything else, but see I that stack know. of of peptides, not all of them, but me I have in my freezer. And off. I there is a little note I explain if I have a stroke or a concussion or anything to the brain, yeah. here's what you're gonna do. And mm -hmm. you're gonna like shoot everything. In the first 12 hours, that's critical. Like C-Max, C-Lang, Cerebrolysin, and uh, which other ones have? Uh, uh, well, the Exano, we just finished to make a batch. I added it. And just like every hour, a shot of everything, bang. And then, then you go with everything because now it's therapeutic. Yeah. You want to fix something. And, and that's another thing. When you look at study, even BPC is great for the nerves. Yeah. And there are like one study, for example, where they cut off the spinal cord of little mice. Yeah. And then they started to shoot them with BPC. And within a couple of weeks, the little mice were kicking again. But see, people usually they read only the abstract. They say, ah, oh, BPC, uh, this, that, oh, fine. No, but that was, they started to give the BPC right after the section when the injury, that's very critical. Cool. Not saying that it won't help, let's say it happened two years ago, but it's gonna be a lot slower because now the damage uh, has occurred. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. The damage and the cicatrization and everything. So. Uh, you have a lot more to work with than at the beginning where it's all fresh and you just repair it fast. So that's why sometimes when you, okay, that's, you, you know, research studies, the abstract, and I know that because I've been in that field for uh, many years and they teach us that the abstract is the publicity of your article. That's what's gonna attract attention to other scientists and then we expect, or anybody who goes on PubMed, but it's expected that after that they read the article yeah. because the, 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 it's publicity. So it's, wow, look, it did that. It's but if you, It's a movie trailer. <laughs> it is, exactly. You just show the best of the best of what happened. Uh, when you go into the details, you say, ah, you know, you, you, 
then you get the real thing and you get a more uh, uh, educated uh, take. Well, you, get, you get a more full perspective. Of exactly. And you get, you know, but on the other hand, this little mouse's ear fell off, but you know, but it's only one. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay. All right. So we're going to, we're going to start to wrap this up because we've been chatting for already. A yeah, but oh, look at time is flying. You know, podcasts they're they're not long and that's why I give conferences and they last like a full day and still I only scratch the surface. Yeah, but I'm not done yet. So here okay. I'm gonna I have a few I have a few questions for you. Okay. So because the primary group that we're recording this is for the biohacking for superhuman performance. Yes. So these so in general, these are people who are looking to optimize. So assuming that our audience is well versed enough in understanding they have to clean up their diet, they have to manage their stress, they have to get their sleep lined up, they have to make sure that they're not too toxic, they have to get rid of some of the heavy metals and rebalance the minerals. If it was you, what would be the top like is there are there three or are there four? What would be your top players in the peptide world before we talk about anything else? Because I'll ask you about other stuff too. But what would be the top peptides that you would have these people kind of do cycles, like maybe a short cycle of once or twice a year? Uh, well, Epitalon, that's number one. number one. Even though there is an ongoing study right now that is not looking good. Uh, yeah, well, you sent me that letter. I saw But uh, as, as I said, you know, uh, I fear the man. Well, it's Mark Twain who used to say, I fe fear the man of only one book. Uh, me, I fear the man of only one study. So, so you know. Bad results, or is it just showing that the results aren't? Uh, well, the 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 mice taking the epitalon seems to die younger than the mice who are not taking it, so it doesn't look good at this point. <laughs> but, but, but his study was on humans. Is it possible? That of course, that's another thing. Uh, well, I won't get much into, but you know, mice are used as first line of studies to see if, uh, because they live more shorter, so it doesn't take years to see if they'll get a cancer or this, you know, we know in a few weeks, and okay, that's not good. Uh, um, but Many times uh, you cannot transpose. And yes, the studies on epitalon, like coming out of Russia, that showed longevity and positive effect were done on humans yeah. uh, and dogs and monkeys, I think. So, you know, they're more. Uh, they're higher. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so. The mice vertebrates too, but different. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, just to give you a fast example, uh, again, me, I come because of my expertise back then from the bodybuilding world, athletes at the time and all that. So, and there is that drug and there is that guy back then, Dan Duchesne, he was kind of, he, he was a bright man. There was no internet. He would dig up studies and come up with theories and many times it worked. And uh, one day he comes up, he say, okay, hey, clan bitterol. Studies show that in pigs, it increases the muscle mass by 30% mm -hmm. and decrease the fat mass by 40%. So, hey, it didn't take long. All the bodybuilders, they, they jumped on the clenbuterol. And they didn't get anything near those results. They saw, okay, it's, it helps to burn fat, but to do so, it's, uh, you know, you shake like that all the time. It's like overdosing on caffeine 24 hours a day. Uh, so you see even... So in the pigs, they showed it showed something that showed promising, and in human, no, because we don't have as many receptors as the pigs for that kind of compound. That's why I say let's wait till the end of that study, and uh, that's why I still trust more that longitudinal studies because more than one was done on many many people. Uh, 
by Kevinson uh, back then, and and it showed only improvements, uh, except for telomeres, because I'm not sure the way they measured telomeres almost 20 years ago. I'm not sure it was that accurate as it is today. But it doesn't. Even if it didn't, I don't care because uh, so many things improve yeah. instead of. Everything that you would expect to go down is going up. So you say no. So for me, a pitalon is still at the top. Twice okay. a year, 100 milligram that you spread out. That's a number one. Uh, CGC 1295 combo with the pamorelin mm -hmm. uh, to bring back youthful levels of uh, growth hormone. Uh, I, uh, that would be in a stack, anti-aging stack. I would throw that in and cycle it. You know, you do it maybe for six weeks, eight weeks, and maybe stop for a month and then start again. So, you know. Yeah. And a third one from what I gather now, I would do time as an alpha one a couple of times, maybe three, four times a year, depending on the age, on the... Uh, well, many factors, but I would do time as an alpha one. Very promising. As a little uh, cleanup. Yeah, of course, there is that one, Foxo for DRI, but uh, if you're ready to spend 10, 15,000 US a month, yeah, go for it. It's, it is working, but it's a bit expensive. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But good. even then, uh, because it actually works... Uh, at the senes in the senescent cycle. It, it's the only peptide so far that showed that it not only stop or slow down aging, but reverses it. So no, the mice. Uh, awesome. Okay, it was mice, my study, but again, you know what they say, it's only a mice study until it proves my point, then it yeah. becomes a study. <laughs> But, you know, if you extrapolate, you know, do calculation to human age, it actually, they were 15 to 20 years younger. Gray hair turned black, they, you know, they got healthy again and everything. Uh, so, yeah, maybe not like in a full-fledged therapy, but if you can afford a couple of vials where and there, hey, sure, it's going to help, you know, and cycle it a little, whatever you can afford. Uh, and it, any little bit will help, basically. And probably after, you won't see that reversing fast, but it will add up. And maybe after a few years, you'll notice a, a difference too from uh, using it, you know. What about the GHKCU? Would you say, I mean, I wonder, you know, as a woman. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's the thing. People, they have, a, a, because most people, they take, and GHK alone, if you inject, is good enough. It's going to bind to copper in your blood and become GHK. The, the CU thing become popular when they started to use it for the skin. Topically. So, yeah, topically and the pep. GHK couldn't find copper there, so you know, so you, you you attach it and use it on the skin. But if you inject it, you don't need the, the, the copper, unless you're deeply deficient in copper. Then you know. Uh, but see, that's another point. You know, make sure first your copper status is good. Yeah. But uh, my mineral analysis. <laughs> But people, they, they, they read the, the abstract of the studies done on that peptide and they see, oh, it's good to repair tissues. And yes, it is. But it is, it's short, so short acting, you would need between seven and 10 milligrams a day to get that effect, uh, to repair. That, that's, I'm talking therapeutic. Okay. And to get the same effect as in the studies, by far, you would need to inject small dosages, like let's say one milligrams, 10 to 12 times a day. Oh my God, that's a nightmare. To get 
that kind of result. That's why you need to read the whole article when you read an article. And then you realize therapeutically, it's really not practical. It's still an amazing peptide that I use preventively, one, two milligrams a day. It turns on uh, the expression of over a thousand genes. So yes, uh, as a preventive approach, great. Uh, you know, you just, even if it's uh, for a short time, well, it's better than not at all. And yes, you, you'll have a cumulative effect. But so preventive for what? For skin aging? No, uh, a bunch of stuff. I, I, I uh, almost going to say, I don't know. that It's a thousand genes. I don't know them all. <laughs> no, I guess what I mean is that GHK... You know, the, when I look at the slide that I saw at the first conference I went to, when I first learned about peptides, it was about uh, re like uh, reversing photo damage on the skin, um, like skin da sun damage on the skin. Okay, that, that, that becomes therapeutic. If you inject, you have to go through that kind of protocol. But if it's skin, then you apply it with copper on the skin. And of course, it's going to be slowly absorbed and you put the cream or whatever a few times a day. And yes, it's going to work great like that. But it, when it, you go internal where you need to inject, if you want a therapeutic effect, you're looking at multiple shots a day. And I think, you know, yeah, the first week you're going to do it. and uh, But I'm telling you, the second week you're going to say, no, no, no. Uh, even the most hardcore, the, no. No, no. You need one of those. It's like you know what they put on the diabetics for the insulin pump. You need one of those little pumps that's just going to keep. Yeah, actually, uh, soon I'm not going to reveal it, but is to make peptides act active longer, which make them more potent because they remain longer around uh, there are ways to do that and uh, we're going to start to do that with some of our peptides really yeah so that they it extends their act their time of activity and so like bpc 157 we say we should inject twice a day so you're going to be developing a way maybe once a day i'm not talking one shot and it's going to be good yeah. for a week but when you needed multiple shots then you could bring it down to one shot a day and have uh, the extended uh, effect. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So then for the, okay, so we've done the peptides. I, you know, I mean, obviously we could keep talking about peptides all night because I'm curious, what about TB, TB500? Well, we can have other uh, you know, sessions okay. where we'll yeah. dive in more specific things. So, okay, so before we go, because 10 minutes ago we said we were wrapping up and we're still talking, which is perfect. This was my plan that we would start. We, we would Listen, me, I have nothing else to do. I don't have any social life, so no problem. <laughs> well, we're going to have to change that, John. <laughs> um, so, what I like moving past the peptides from, um, and you talked, to, you alluded to this a little bit beforehand from a diet and lifestyle perspective in terms of a longevity protocol or plan, even for yourself. Like, what do you do in terms of? your own longevity plan okay i'm gonna tell you i'm not gonna tell you what i do because no, i'm gonna tell you what i should do because <laughs> right. i've been so busy like in the last year that you know i kind of i've anyway i'm a strong believer in fasting yeah short fast if needed but intermittent fasting yeah um uh, but you don't need to go crazy on that. Again, if it's preventive, uh, you know you get exactly the same effect from doing intermittent fasting three days a week mm -hmm. as if you are doing it seven days a week. Oh, yeah. Uh, if you want to lose weight, then yeah, I would go every day, uh, maybe with a window of uh, seven, eight hours of eating. And one day you eat 
all day and the next day you do a 24. You know, that's Ben Greenfield who proposed that protocol and I, I love it. So it's a diet variation, right? It's yeah. Like and then you have that cycle thing and if the day you eat all day, you pick Saturday or Sunday so it makes you sociable. Yeah. Uh, because one thing, if people want to lose weight and that's the thing I don't like about uh, intermittent fasting because the tendency is to skip breakfast but always when you want to lose weight you have to have breakfast like a king lunch like a prince and dinner like a poor mm -hmm. which means sometimes in our case nothing mm -hmm. so yeah the same principle uh, but bring that window early during the day and don't eat at night and that's because of the cortisol if you don't cortisol is uh, high already in the morning and if you don't eat you're just gonna keep it up which is good to burn fat but fast you're gonna fall into uh adrenal fatigue if you want to call it this way and it depends who you talk to but you understand and it 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 doesn't do good good for your cortisol cycle so but if you move it in the morning you want to lose weight and and many times people they do intermittent fasting and they don't lose weight because they do that they eat at night i tell them just shift it in the morning and bang they start losing weight that with the same quality of food and uh, and everything yeah but socially that's much more difficult but that's the thing but that's therapeutic now you want to lose weight so you know you have to do something you do it for a time you yeah. lose the weight and then if and it's a general good practice then uh, when you you attain the weight you want then yes you can move it up at night uh, because you are not losing weight but you are not gaining either so you know so that's for maintenance yeah you move it at night and you can cheat once and there if you're invited to a brunch yeah you go because again the benefits you'll get from that intermittent fasting three times a week so uh, it, you become more flexible but to lose weight move it in the morning and tough it for the time it takes yeah okay so that's intermittent fasting is one of your long exercise okay charles always used to say we're not meant to uh, catch the rabbits, we're built to throw rocks at the rabbit. <laughs> we're not meant for slow runs. Man is built to do two things, walking and sprinting. Yeah. And that's what you should do, walk every day, at least half an hour. And once in a while, you sprint, you do sprints and inter uh, interval trainings and all that. Maybe once in a blue moon, you can go for a run if you like it. Maybe once every two weeks, you know, you do like three interval trainings and every eight or nine training, then you do a slow run. You know, that's not gonna kill you. Uh, and lift weights sometimes, yeah. you know, lift, uh, not even weights, heavy things. You know, that's what we're, built for yeah, and uh, yeah. it's part that 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 will improve the uh, increase the expression of positive genes yeah yeah and there is that doctor i saw a few of his conferences uh, rakowski and he brought he trains a lot of athletes and what he noticed with a lot of athletes that run a lot and it's not brought up many times. You know, we talk about many things you can say it's why it's not good, but even for the internal organs, okay. because you know, when you slow run for half an hour, for an hour, you know, that's going up and down and up and down and it's moving around. And it, it seems it's really not good <laughs> for your internal organs. So uh, another point I'm just bringing out. So uh, yeah. yeah. So but I again, I, I'm saying that with the parenthesis. If you really like running, jogging and all that, and you're not at all, don't force yourself to do something you really don't enjoy because you're going to give up. It's better to go run, jogging and all that, than start an activity like okay i'll go to the gym three times a week and in three months you're gonna give up because you don't like it i'd rather see you run 
and you know then deal a bit with what little problems that could bring about that but that can be dealt with than doing nothing so you know i'm not that extremist no 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 don't do it I, i'm giving you the, the the what i think is the ideal situation but that ideal situation is not ideal for everybody mm -hmm. for sure for sure so a little bit of fasting you know smart exercise what about what else how about sleep I, uh, I, I need i need to mention that because they were supposed to deliver it today there is that Carol bike, it comes out of uh, England. Uh, yeah, I bought it. I, I thought they were delivered. It was supposed to be delivered today, so probably tomorrow. <laughs> A whole aerobic, like nine minutes. I said, no, I need that. <laughs> I, did, I, I demoed it in at Paleo FX in April. I was like, this thing is the bomb. Yeah, it is. I, I, you know, I met this guy who came along with uh, Ben Pakulski. We, we had lunch and he talked. Uh, I told after, I said, you should be a salesman for uh, that bike because he bought it for himself and he, he loves it. Yeah. And me, I saw the, the thing. It's all technology from those... Uh, AI, yeah. But northern countries, there where they do all those, they're very advanced in biohacking and everything. And I say, well, that's it, you know. And yeah, I bought it. Yeah, no, so, it's a nine. What is it? It's an eight-minute workout, and boom, you're done. Nine, nine, nine. Yeah, nine. Uh, it's like that. But again, hey, you you have a great idea, like that movie. Uh, what about Mary? You know, the guy who came up with the three minutes ab workout. So we, we should come up with an eight minute thing and be <laughs> but yeah, that's, uh, that's one thing, you know, so even for the most of, uh, lazy people, come on, nine minutes, three times a week, that's nothing. And it's supposed to bring about like great results. Yeah. yeah. And, and you've seen, eh, it takes your heart rate, the text, all it's supposed to be really precise. Well, actually that precise that if it detects anything's weird, it's yeah. going to block everything and put a message, go see your doctor <laughs> and you won't be able to use the bike anymore. That's it. You're blocked. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm very it's, eager to see that thing. And you know what? It's funny. I mean, it's an investment, but it's not that much money for what it is. If you think about it, people spend that much money. They you know, in the house, we're three, we're, we're going to be three people using it. Yeah. And, uh, and probably eventually I'll have some clients, you know, selected come in yeah so you know it's uh, but even you know if if it's only for yourself you may think it's a bit expensive but as soon as you fall into the family thing no it's three four people using it you know it's not that expensive uh, given it does bring about those results which I think it does they have very uh, sound science uh, behind yeah, it so they yeah, have really good research on it. Yeah, so that, yeah. So diet, exercise, um, sleep, sleep hygiene is, actually that's number one. And that's, uh, you uh, okay, that's eight, nine hours a night. Uh, uh, no, uh, it all depends, it all depends on quality of your sleep. And you can, actually, you know, a sleep cycle is 90 minutes. Yeah. So it should be six hour or seven and a half or nine. But me, I found personally either six or seven and a half. That's where I'm the most productive and rested and everything. And there is the doctor uh, with Michael uh, Briss. Which one? Briss. Oh, I just got his book today. <laughs> I just got it's um, Briss yeah. here. I have no, no kickback from that. Yeah. And yeah, he says, no, 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 no. That's eight, nine hours uh, sleep. That That's no, no, no. That's for people who don't have good sleep hygiene. You know, if mm -hmm. everything is on the notch as it should be. And he talks about the, uh, the chrono uh, timing of your sleep. Some people are more, because, you know, 20, 30,000 years ago, 
It's not true that everybody would go to sleep when the sun was down. There was always a group of people that was assigned to watch for the fire and uh, watch for animals, and they would sleep more during the daytime and be up at night. And those genes sometimes kicks in, and it makes those people that, me, yeah, I'm one of them, uh, work better at night. And so, but he, he, he gives uh, indication how to find what's your, uh, I, I didn't read the book yet, but you know, I just saw a few videos and it, it sounds, uh, it sounds pretty good. So, you know, you can look into that. But when you're done, but the, 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 there is so many, the, the thing, you know, my first book on anti-aging, you know, I was 19 when I bought it. The book just came out. I have no clue. I, because back then there was no internet. I was living in a small town up North Quebec. Uh, I, I, I don't, I don't know how, how we did things back then, but you know, I would get those books and everything. Uh, I got the whole library of uh, that Sheldon, you know, the fast, the guy who was a big proponent of fasting in the 19th century. I had old books from back then. I got the originals and now I look back and I said, how did I get that? Where? I don't know, but I got them. And I got that book, uh, Life Extension, a huge book. You can still find it. I bought a copy, an old copy, but on Amazon. Yeah. Uh, 1982, I bought the book. Uh, and, and uh, okay, what you get out of that because many things they're not up to date like for growth hormone secretion it was ornithine and uh, arginine and you know what was done back then but what you get out of that book is still very true when you grow older there are only two things you need to control glycemia yeah. and inflammation Interesting. you Interesting. keep those two things under check and it has to do with cell senescence. It comes yeah. down to that. So if, uh, and now you know other names and you know you have those tests, but uh, basically those are the two things you need to keep in check. And everything you do is to keep those two things in check. Exercise, diet, sleep, everything. Yeah. Stress, everything. Stress. Yeah. All right. Glycemic index and inflammation. The key, we come back to square one, right? Um, Basically, uh, you know, we don't reinvent the wheel. Uh, <laughs> you know what? I agree with you. I think that a lot of what we talk about today, if we were to go back and like really back. Well, we'll have time. But see, I got those from uh, Holland. That's uh, Deprenil. That was an anti-aging drug. It's a medication for um, Parkinson. But in small dosages, they found out that mice would live 20, 25% longer. What we see today, it costs nothing. And you, because you take like one or two pills a week to get that effect, you don't want to take too much because then you have a bunch of uh, side effects. Uh, if I may open that parenthesis, and I've been, I've been there back then, and I see many times the best drugs, I'm talking pharmacy drugs, are the ones that were there in the 70s and 60s. Everything that came out after, I would say more than 80% of what came up after is not better. It's patented. You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't need to say more. So they will tell you it's better, but it's not. You know, metformin. You know, that, that now they're supposed to start that study on anti-aging of metformin. Yeah. When the FDA released that, the same week, that company, they say, oh, yeah, and now our company is working on a better version, modified version of metformin that will have a greater effect. Okay. And me, what I what I hear is no, we're working on a patented version of metformin, so it won't cost you forty cent a pill. It's gonna cost you ten dollars a pill. Yeah. That's what I hear when I hear those people. Yeah. No things, you know, the old stuff. It was good back then. It's still good today. Yeah. So you know, the, sometimes you don't need to go look at the edge of. Yeah, things like peptides we didn't have back then. So, yeah, that's good. But 
drag wise sometimes the the old stuff it was good back then it's still good today no problem so you can add those things to uh, cycles don't do it every time uh, all, all the time but cycle it okay so many things so many things then it's all about cycling and pulsing things so thank you Jean-Francois I think um I think we've got lots of good stuff here tonight this is okay. a great foundation from us to spring forward from and um I look forward to digging into it a little further with you. So maybe what we can do is agree that in a few weeks when you've had time to dig Yeah, we can do that a couple of times a month, like every two weeks or so. That that would be a good uh, a good pattern. And meanwhile, if people have specific questions, you know, direct them on 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 in the group. Don't write me, don't write uh, our friend here because you know, uh, I want to answer. If if you need an answer that requires a book chapter, forget it. I just won't answer. If I may answer, if the answer is yes, no, maybe, or I don't know, <laughs> then I will answer. But otherwise, direct the questions in the group. Start to have like one section only for questions that we could yeah. attend in the next, uh, like a section of the next podcast would be for those questions. Yeah. And uh, so on, so forth, and do it from one podcast uh, yeah, to the so next. Yeah, that's a good idea. I think what I'll do next time is I will give people about a week. They can post their questions and there then we'll go through the questions and we'll select the ones. Because many times, uh, many people will have the same question. So, yeah, for sure. Mm, okay. I see that a lot uh, myself. You know, I'm getting a bunch of messages. You've seen it. You know, I'm there at two in the morning answering emails and all that. And it's taking a, a big toll on my life, actually. So, uh, yeah. I think it's time to get that under control, my friend. Okay. Mm. Okay. All right. So all right. nice talking to you. Thank you. And, and to all people. Thank you so much for everything. Thanks for all that you do. And uh, we'll talk again soon. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>